How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now for today we have the MM830 which is Cooler Masters a top of the range mouse currently with an optical 3360 sensor, a cool little d-pad here on the side and then also a display to show some cool information. Now pricing wise for the MM830 it won't break the bank especially for all that it delivers retailing for a 950 Rand on Rebel Tech here in South Africa or around $65 on Amazon. For the design, Cooler Master went with a right-handed only ergonomic shape, but that does fit very nicely in your hand. Cooler Master also went with PBT plastic instead of the standard ABS, which does make it feel a lot more a premium, but that does also add some weight, which we'll get into later. The PBT has an ever so slightly texture to it that does add some grip, especially if you are in a heavy gaming session and your hands are starting to sweat a bit. You do get this opening slice just above the palmers as well, but don't worry, it didn't even bother me while I was using it, so it's fine. As for the size of the mouse and the grip styles, being that it's more of a large to medium size mouse, palm or a claw grip would be recommended and of course hand size more of a medium to large size hands. Now getting into the weight, the MM830 weighs in around 125 grams without the cable. With the cable it gets quite heavy at around 165 grams. Now I understand why it's more on the heavier side, that display does add some weight, the PBT plastic does also add some weight, so it is understandable. And if you do like heavier gaming mice, then of course this is going to be an option for you. Now moving on to the right side, this is where all of the magic happens. So firstly, you do get that curved out thumb rest that supports your thumb really well. It is especially useful because on the left side of the mouse, you do get this four-way d-pad. With the d-pad you can customize each of those buttons in the portal software and add secondary controls with the tactics feature. Now compared to some of the other mice with just like the standard thumb buttons, the d-pad does feel somewhat better. The reason being is that your thumb is pretty much always placed partly on the three front buttons so it's a lot quicker to press and with a lot less movement required. You can pretty much just roll your thumb over to whatever side you want and you'll be able to press down on that button so really not a lot of movement involved. Now as for the back button, yeah that one's a bit harder to press and requires you to stretch somewhat back but it's still not impossible. Uh, it is worth mentioning that because your thumb is pretty much always placed on the d-pad, the buttons does require a bit more pressure to use because otherwise you'll accidentally press them but also don't worry, you don't have to be like a thumb bodybuilder or anything to press it, it's really not that bad. But now moving on to the display, you get a black and white OLED display with a resolution of 96 by 24 pixels. Now you won't be able to watch Shroud owning on it, but you can show some of your system information, your mouse information, your APM count, your game genre, and then also you can create your own custom picture to display on it. Now don't judge my, my picture that I drew, it was quick and I'm not an artist, but that's kind of the stuff that you can do and just play around with that. I will say that even though this is still kind of cool, the MMI30's display is lacking a few things. It currently can't show any game stats or any other really features. Just for example, the Rival 700, which also has a display on the side, with that one you can show your game stats like health, kills, headshots, and so on. There's a lot more game integration with their software into the display. And that's kind of the stats I want to be see implemented into the MM830. So just by quickly tilting your mouse somewhat a bit and then you can see that stats there on the side and you don't have to go out of the game, you can quickly still see it there. Now, I'm not sure if Coolmaster will add this though, I, I doubt it because it's a lot more work involved. But for future mice, I want to see more options like that. 
something like a clock, then you can see your time, a timer, a countdown, a game achievement system, a alert, or there's just a ton of other ones that they can actually add. I wanna see more involved into the display because it's a really nice feature, but if it's not implemented right, then it's just kind of there. Now I am possibly going overboard with uh, this because again, it might be a lot of work to do that, game integration and all of that. But if you do have the feature, take full advantage of that and make the mouse even better. Then moving on to the right side, you just get a slight downwards curve in the front and a backwards curve more towards the palm. Uh, no issues there, pinky placement and ring finger placement was a very, very nice, extremely comfortable mouse in my opinion. For the left and right mouse buttons, you get Omram switches with a 20 million click life cycle. The buttons does feel nice and snappy with a good travel distance, so no issues there. Then for the scroll wheel, you get a slightly textured rubber grip with RGB on the sides. The scroll does have a decently short step to it, but I believe the sample that I had had a faulty scroll wheel because even though the scroll on its own isn't quiet at all, uh, it did make this annoying squeaking noise in certain times. But now if that just happens to you, you do have a two year warranty. So just send it back and they should replace it for you. Then behind the scroll wheel, you get the single DPI selection switch that lets you cycle through the four DPI levels, ranging from 200 to 24,000 in increments of 100. You also get these three light bars that will let you know on what DPI level you are on. Then taking a look underneath the mouse, you do get three glide pads that does deliver a nice smooth and silent glide. For the center, you get the old Faithful a Pixar PMW 3360 optical sensor with a max DPI of 24,000, an IPS of 250, a max polling rate of 1000 Hz, and then for liftoff distance, it was a very low at even less than 1 DVD. Then just really quickly for the cable, you get a 1.8 meter USB braided cable that is pretty flexible. And yep, that's pretty much it. Then finally getting into the portal software, here you can do all the basics like change the commands of the, the buttons, create your own macros, adjust the DPI, polling rate, angle snapping, liftoff distance and so on. You do also have a bunch of lighting effects that you can apply for the scroll wheel and for the logo on the palm rest. Then finally again you do have the controls for the display on the side. So then all in all, the MM830 from Cool Monster is a featured uh, pack mouse with a great shape, premium materials, I do love the ABS plastic, a great sensor, old faithful, and then of course for a not too bad a price of only around $65. There are a few things that I think Cool Monster can work on to make the mouse even better, but honestly I don't have really anything bad to say about the mouse currently just that kind of that scroll wheel that sometimes is a bit squeaky uh, I think that's only my sample but yeah that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys I do hope you enjoyed if you did please like share comment comment like always uh, links are in the description below big thanks to Cooler Monster for sending this one over and I'll check all of you next time cheers guys